Hi guys and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. My name is Kasha, I am your host and in today's video we're going to review the Betta Mini Bowl 1 Gallon from Aquion. We're going to see if it works or if it fails. So let's get started. So let's start by taking a look at the packaging. It does kind of make it seem like it's really easy. It says ideal for betta and all around it says all about the fish, but the packaging does say to use room temperature water, which is very vague. What your room temperature is could be very different vastly from where you are in the world. In the instructions, it also says to wait 24 hours before adding your fish to the aquarium, but it mentions nothing about cycling the tank, which is very, very misleading because within the 24 hours, nothing is happening in the tank. So yeah, yeah, we're just gonna move past that and take out the tank itself so we can see the different pieces. This is the light and hood. I like that at least, you know, there's a hood. There's two feeding holes for some reason. And I do like that there is plastic separating the light bulb from the fish so that it doesn't get wet or the fish doesn't jump and hurt itself. We do get a very interestingly designed internal filter and we do have an instruction manual which most people probably will not read. Unfortunately, I did actually read all the instructions and in it, it tells you how to not get electrocuted. Pretty much mentions all the things that could possibly you can sue them for, but mentions nothing about fish care. Now the plant itself is kind of really disappointing and I'm concerned that it could rip up a betta's fins. If you look at the pet stores, they have such nice, colorful silk plants. I don't know why they couldn't have given you something just slightly, slightly nicer. And then here's the rest of the stuff that was provided, which was a filter cartridge, betta food sample, as well as a water conditioner, which I wish came in a tiny little bottle because at least you would have been able to use it a few times instead of one time, because now after you use it for the first time, you're gonna have to go back to the pet store and buy yourself a bottle of water conditioner. So in a weird way, this is kind of designed to make you go back to the store again, which I mean, I guess they want to encourage more consumerism because this kit already in itself encourages encourages impulse buying by advertising itself as being so tiny and simple and easy. That being said, when it comes to assembly, this is easy. And I am glad that at the very least they provide you with a filter because that is just one thing that will make your life a little easier. Now the filter cartridge does have activated carbon, which is also a bonus, but they don't give you any gravel. So here I am in my gravel bag, magical gravel bag. I'm using some leftover gravel from a previous tank that I set up. Now keep in mind that when you have these little tanks, don't fill up the gravel very high. I see this happen all the time. People fill up the gravel super deep. You're taking away space from the fish in a container that already doesn't provide the fish with a lot of space to begin with and because you're not going to be planting any crazy fancy plants there is really no reason to have a deep gravel bed now i ended up not using their water conditioner i was using the fritz guard conditioner i added the plant and as you can see it looks kind of sparse if that's all you end up buying that's that's not a whole lot to to work with especially because you don't get gravel either but once you turn on the filter i realized that it wasn't functioning properly so i realized i have to put the water level all the way up to that little line and then it starts to function properly. The weird thing is it has two exits and that one right there is somewhere that Betta will more than likely swim up. Bettas love to squeeze themselves and go into places where they probably shouldn't, dangerous places, and that would result in your fish getting stuck inside the filter. So I blocked it off with some filter media right here as well as I did some filter floss from an already cycled aquarium so that I can jump start the cycling process now when you turn this on with the little light uh it looks okay it looks it looks nice this light itself is very yellow in color and definitely is not strong enough to grow aquarium plants maybe anubius at most so i decided to try to test this for at least a week with an actual betta. This is a betta that was finishing up his quarantine. He's a new betta of mine, and I added some more stuff to make him more comfortable. The next day I checked the temperature, and this is the temperature of my fish room, so it was 79.5, yet the temperature of the little tank was showing 81.9, and then after I turned on the light, it started to go up pretty quickly. As you can see, even right now, it jumped to 82, which was a big red flag for me and a big concern. Now, I heat my entire fish room so I don't have to run heaters in certain tanks, so I can get away with heating a bowl, but this tank should, in theory, be roughly at like 78, 79 with the temperature of my fish room. 
So I was very concerned as to why the temperature was going up and had to investigate further. Within a couple of minutes, the temperature jumped up to 84.5. So this is a big, big red flag because with any fish, you need stable temperature. Fluctuating temperature kills fish. It shortens their lifespan. So I investigated, I touched the lid, and it turned out that the lid was indeed hot. So the light itself was heating the tank and because the lid doesn't have many openings, the heat was being trapped. So I investigated with a heat gun and here I am kind of measuring the different spots. And in the hottest area, the temperature was going up to 95 degrees. So of course that meant that the tank itself had the potential of heating up up to 95 degrees or even hotter if I allowed this to get any hotter. This is a really big concern because if you live in a warm place, you can potentially cook your fish. So this is, this is a dangerous product. Here is yet another update on the little tiny Aquion bow tank. I tried removing the lid with the light, and which is kind of dangerous because he can jump. He hasn't, but I'm not too happy with having to do that. And with that, instead of the temperature fluctuating between anywhere from 80 to 85, now the temperature has dropped a bit and it's at, well right here it would be at, yeah, 77.8 and this is, what is over here, about yeah, 77, 78, which is still an okay temperature for a betta. Uh, I don't have a heater on here because this fish room is heated, but, um, this would, I don't know, it's, it's such a pain in the butt to manage the temperature. Now it's a bit lower. Clearly the temperature in drop, uh, the drop in temperature, I can't words, has stressed him out a little bit because as you can see, he started fin nipping again. And another issue is I've been trying to, moving around the decorations and I've been trying to use this fake leaf that I'm kind of propping up with this right here to block some of the flow. But even with this, he's still being kind of moved around and pushed around, which could also contribute to the fact that he is nipping his fins. So I don't, I don't like this. I think there's too many things. There's some things in here that are, that are good. And it seems like they're trying to improve and, and do better, but there's too many issues. And just me having to mess around with this and change this around and try to make this work for this guy is too stressful for him. So I think at this point, I'm going to be moving him out into an actual tank where things are gonna be stable, he's not gonna get blown around, and so he can just relax and, and not be stressed out anymore. So this is where I moved him. He is in a divided 20 gallon with other fishy friends. Everyone has their own separate compartment. He does not have a neighbor right here. And I intentionally did this so that he can kind of acclimate without having to be bothered by anybody else. So he currently stopped fin biting. This tank does have a heater just in case it has one right there even though the temperature is still pretty stable. And each compartment is filtered and in such a way that as you can see he can very easily swim in the front without um, having... A hard time. I also gave him a betta leaf to lay on because this is a deeper tank than the previous one and he is long finned. But as you can see, he's very spunky, he's excited. Even though I just fed him earlier, he is begging for food right now. But I think that either something like this or a 5, 10, or even entire 20 gallon to himself would have been a much better option. Uh, with this, I don't have to worry about fluctuating temperatures because this stays a lot more stable because larger volumes of water are more stable. My little foot, what are you doing? I'm trying to educate the peoples. All the animals are judging me right now. She's rolling around. What is going on? But I hope that you found this review helpful. I hope that it helps you pick out a much better tank. I honestly think you're just much better off getting something bigger. It's going to be a lot easier to take care of. At the very, very least, get a 2.5 gallon. I prefer 5 to 10 gallons. Those are really good sizes. So, 
yeah, I hope that this video helped you. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe and check out my other betta or fish related videos. Bonus rant time. So Aquion surprisingly also has a basic 10 gallon kit, which on the photo is recommending three, three goldfish for 10 gallon tank. How, how is this about f the fish? How, how is this good for, and look, it, get, it gets worse. They have a mini bowl, which is only 2.5 gallons and they're, they're showing you a goldfish in it. Clearly a lot of beginner fish keepers are gonna follow what the photo recommends. So this is false advertising, but you know what? Maybe, maybe they don't know all about the fish even though their box claims it. Let's do a little research. Um, yes, they have a care sheet. Let's take a look at it. Goldfish should never be kept in bowls. Small aquariums, small aquariums, small aquariums. Yet, so you, you know, you know that they shouldn't be kept in small aquariums, yet you advertise that goldfish are kept in small aquariums that you make. Um, let's see what else. Uh, oh, there we go, there we go. Least, uh, they should have at least 20 gallons of water per fish. Per fish. Right there, there it is. Yet, here you go, you're advertising three fish for 10 gallons, but they should have 20 gallons, or here you're saying at least 10 gallons per adult fish for fancy goldfish which is which is mm, i would say 20 still but see so, you, so they're aware they know they made a care guide that specifically says this yet their product says otherwise what is going on